Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the VCSU Spring Instrumental Concert. My name is Dustin Mallory, and I'm the director of the Jazz Ensemble here at VCSU. Just like to start by extending a big welcome to all the parents, family members, friends, neighbors, staff, faculty, administrators, and everyone in the VCSU community for taking a little time to be here this evening to support these students and to support live music. That first piece was Get Happy. Uh, it was written in 1930, but probably the most famous version, uh, version of that tune was Judy Garland's version from a movie in 1950. The next piece on the program is gonna feature our alto saxophonist, Izzy Haugen, and this is a composition by the composer Wayne Shorter. So unfortunately, Wayne Shorter passed this winter, and he's, in my view, the most important jazz composer of the last 50 years, but certainly in the top, you know, five, 10 composers. And so after he passed, I uh, came to rehearsal the following week, and we read through probably a dozen Wayne Shorter tunes, and I let the students vote on their favorite one to play for this evening, and they actually picked one of his older tunes from the Blue Note era. This is a piece called House of Jade. So for the musicians in the house uh, that know Wayne or know music, his music is known for what we call non-functional harmonies, but to the layperson, just means chords that don't follow the rules. So he's sort of a jazz impressionist, a lot of color chords. So we hope you enjoy this House of Jade. Thank you. 
For our next selection, we're going to go back to the Great American Songbook. Uh, this is a Rogers and Hart classic um, from the show The Boys from Syracuse. And if any of you were here last night for the opera concert, you heard some music from the same show. So we're back to back nights with The Boys from Syracuse. So um, singing with the group this evening, would you welcome to the stage our other singer, Mr. Tanner Duville. Falling in 
Before we play our final selection this evening, I just want to let you know that there's going to be a brief intermission while we reset the stage for the concert band, so feel free after this selection to get up, stretch your legs, you know, use the restrooms, uh, get a drink of water, any of that good stuff, and then we'll be right back with you. Um, our final selection is our Latin tune for this evening, and I don't know about all of you, but all I can think about is summertime. This has been a very long winter, so when I close my eyes and listen to this tune, I'm thinking about the beach and the Hawaiian shirts and the sunglasses and the whole bit. So we're almost there, folks. Um, this is Jojo Calypso. Thank you for listening.
everybody. My name is Tara Dahl, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the concert band portion of tonight's program. Our first piece is entitled Prairie Dances, and it is a celebrative cowboy dance. It brings to life the town of Wichita Falls, Texas, around 1882, when it became a cattle and grain shipping center thanks to the arrival of the railroad. As the music plays this evening, you might imagine the hustle and bustle of this busy cowboy town. So without further ado, please enjoy David Holsinger's Prairie Dances. Alexis Bush, and I'm pleased to announce our second selection this evening, which will feature a student soloist accompanied by our chamber wind ensemble. Zardas is the most famous work of Italian composer and violinist, Vittorio Monti. This piece was originally written for solo violin with piano accompaniment and has since been adapted countless times for many solo instruments and accompanying ensembles. It has become synonymous with gypsy music and dancing, expressing freedom, passion, and playfulness. Please welcome to the States tonight's feature soloist, junior clarinetist, Teddy Dimmer, as she performs Zardas with BCSU Chamber Winds. Oh. 
Good evening, I am Jaden Moser, and I'm so excited to share program notes for Arte del Tango, our third selection. Arte del Tango was commissioned by the Iowa Bandmasters Association for the 22 All Iowa Eighth Grade Honor Band. It was written in the Tango Nuevo style, a genre pioneered by Astor Piazzolla that influenced that infused elements of jazz and classical music into the traditional Argentinian tango. Arte del Tango combines a traditional tango accompaniment, haunting melodies, and jazz-inspired harmonies which allow concert bands to experience the power and passion of one of South America's most popular dance and musical styles.
We would like to take a moment to recognize our graduating seniors as they participate in their final concert. This year's group of seniors is a special bunch of individuals who gained a great deal of perspective through their time here. They were the final class to join the program prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and remain dedicated to making music despite some being forced to wait a year to wait for large ensembles to return to session. They were freshmen who served in the inauguration ceremony of President Lefebvre and juniors when they helped christen this fantastic facility. Their participation provided a strong example of dedication and perseverance through difficult and exciting times alike. We are so grateful for their contributions and friendship and wish them the best as they move forward to the next chapter in their life. Seniors, when your name is called, would you please stand and remain standing? Audience, we ask that you hold your applause until all names have been called. Jared Gromish, Rebecca Kruger, Cassie Belke, Braylon Bruns, Joe Manoanyu, Kirsten Dempke. Please give these seniors a round of applause. Good evening. My name is Marco Kellogg and I will be introducing the band's final selection this evening. Ghost Dances, which was inspired by the tragic story of the massacre of some 300 members of the Lakota Sioux tribe at Wounded Knee, South Dakota in 1890. Composer Roland Barrett offered a summary of the tragic events as program notes and I would like to share these with you as a prelude to our performance tonight. On the morning of December 29th, a group of about 350 Lakota Sioux were camped on the banks of the Wounded Knee Creek in southwestern South Dakota. Surrounding the camp was a large contingent of U.S. soldiers charged with the responsibility of arresting the chief and disarming his warriors. Emotions were raw, all present were on edge, and the atmosphere was brittle with tension. The preceding months had been devastating for the proud members of the Lakota Sioux tribe. With their buffalo herds rapidly disappearing, and with encroachment on all sides by settlers and government forces, the people knew that the way of life they had known forever was rapidly nearing its end. In a desperate attempt to return to the days of their glory, many Native Americans sought salvation in a new mysticism preached by a Paiute shaman in Nevada. Several Lakota Sioux emissaries had traveled from South Dakota to hear his message. Wovoka prophesied that the dead would soon re rejoin the living in the new world, in which all would live without fear. To hasten this event, he encouraged all who would listen to perform the ghost dance. Many dancers wore white or brightly colored shirts emblazoned with images of eagles and buffaloes. As they danced wildly, they believed these ghost shirts would protect them from soldiers' bullets. During the fall of 1890, the ghost dance phenomenon spread quickly through the Sioux villages of the Dakota reservations, revitalizing the citizenry and bringing an increased level of fear to area settlers and to the U.S. Army. By December of 1890, orders were issued to begin rounding up the area's tribal leaders. One such communication read, the Sioux are dancing in the snow and wild. We need protection and we need it now. The leaders should be arrested and confined at some military post until the matter is quieted, and this should be done now. After the death of Chief Sitting Bull on December 15th, a group of about 350 Lakota fled south, seeking protection on the Pine Ridge Reservation. The Army intercepted the group on December 28th and brought them on the edge of the Wounded Knee Creek to camp. In the early morning hours of December 29th, all the Lakota men were summoned to the center of the camp. The soldiers ordered the men to surrender their weapons, agitating an already tense and serious situation. The Lakota began to stack their guns, but the soldiers were still not satisfied. The troops began ransacking the camp's tents, bringing out bundles and tearing them open, tossing small knives, axes, and tent stakes onto the pile. The soldiers then ordered individual searches of the warriors. 
although the exact details of the next few moments are sketchy. Most accounts say that one of the Sioux, possibly a medicine man named Yellowbird, spoke out in defiance of the soldiers. Throwing dirt in the air, he danced a few steps of the ghost dance and urged his friends not to worry, that the soldiers' bullets could not harm them. As the tension built to an unbearable level, the unthinkable happened. In the noise and confusion, a Lakota gun accidentally discharged. Within seconds, the troops fired volley after volley into the now unarmed camp. Clouds of smoke and dust filled the air as men, women, and children scrambled for their lives. Many ran for a ravine next to the camp, only to be cut down in a withering crossfire. When the smoke cleared and the terrible chaos ended, nearly 300 Lakota Sioux lay dead. Perhaps no summation of the catastrophic event is more profound or eloquent than the following words offered by the famous Lakota medicine man, Black Elk, who survived the massacre. No. I did not know then how much was ended. No. A people's dream died there. No, it, it was a beautiful dream. The nation's hoop is broken and scattered. There is no center any longer and the sacred tree is dead. We thank you for attending tonight's program as we depart with a powerful statement that is Ghost Dances.
night in a row. Uh, your commitment to music is, is, is outstanding. We so appreciate seeing you here. Um, thank you so much. The kids worked so hard all year, and and they really tried. They really tried to do the best every single day. What a privilege to work with that many people and are that dedicated. We're so fortunate here at, DC, at DCSU. Um, so uh, thank you very much. We hope to see you again next week for a choral concert at the end of the week. In the meantime, drive safe and have a fantastic evening. Take care.